Okay, you may be seated. Say with me right now, if you would, say, my heart's open. My mind's ready. Make me better, God. By your word. I receive it. And I believe it. And I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. Shout a great big amen. Amen. I'm really excited to share this message. I believe God spoke to me, and, and Pastor Jabin is right that some of what I'm going to share is, is, is in this book today, but I really felt like it, I hadn't, I hadn't looked at the book in months, and I haven't preached out of it in a while, and I just felt like when I, I started thinking about what God wanted us to say here, I just felt like this is the word that I want to I want to talk about a little while today, and that is don't play it safe. Don't play it safe. I want you to look at your neighbor and say that to him. Say, don't, 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 don't play it safe. Now, you know what was interesting to me when I started feeling that? I'm like, but God, I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> they might need to play it safe a little bit. Playing it safe is dangerous. There's a scene in the Old Testament where King David took off his royal robe and he danced in the streets, literally, celebrating and rejoicing because the Ark of the Covenant is coming back to the temple in Jerusalem. 2 Samuel chapter 6, I'm going to read a little bit of it. Verse 14, it says, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all of his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, She despised him in her heart. So it's pretty evident here in the scripture that McCall, David's wife, was not happy with what was happening in the street. And in her logic of what I'll call royal protocol, she was right. Actually, in her mind, the street was, was dangerous and the street was risky And the street was not where a king really belonged. But David wasn't your typical king. He didn't get where he was by holding back. (laughs) It just wasn't his style. It never had been. And on that day, a dream is coming true for David. In that David had always loved the house of God. And he had always had such a desire to see the Ark of the Covenant brought back to the the temple in Jerusalem. And and finally it's happening. And so what what you see when you read this is like this sincere unbridled passion. And this sincere enthusiasm of answered prayer. And a hope for the future. Uh, that, that God, the ark is coming. The, the, the presence of God is being restored. So, something big is happening. And what I fought for, what I, what I have believed for. What, you know, he, he, had, he had been uh, hated. He had, he had been chased by, by King Saul. And he, he had been put out of the cities. And he was out in the Judean hills. And he's in caverns hiding and running for his life. And, and, and then through supernatural events, God had made him king, and, and, and he understood and knew that he wouldn't have been there with, without God. He knew why he was there. He knew it was his time. He knew it was his turn. He knew not, not, not to take this lightly. And so he's in the street, uninhibited, passion-filled mindset. Come on, is anybody thankful right now? Is anybody thankful for the house of God? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Think-
things happen in God's house that don't happen anywhere else. The salvations, the baptisms, that don't happen over at the Vegas Strip. <laughs> like it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't happen at the, 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 the Nordstrom and the Neiman Marcus. It, it doesn't happen there. Stuff happens here that don't happen anywhere else. Lives get changed. People learn God's ways. They learn God's thoughts. Children are loved. Children are taught. And grow up to be men and women of God. Anybody thankful for God's house? Come on, five years. Five years. But notice the contrast, window versus street. The window was comfortable from McCall. It was a safe distance from the people. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I know I'm talking to some of you. Like this is your, this is your invitation to be daring, to be courageous. Where McCall was sitting, it was like the VIP booth at an NFL football game, way up high, way up high in, 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 in you know, it was, a, it was a place of prestige, right? It was, a, it was a place where everybody would kind of like to go for the prestigious dynamic of it. She was there. She was where only the big shots would, would be. But the difference is that she wasn't really making a difference. <laughs> you don't really make a difference in the game when you're sitting up there. Like if the wave comes through, you're not expected to be a part of it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're up there, and then the wave goes all around the stadium, and you're in your booth. <laughs> and that's not where David wanted to hang out. Right. David, David wanted to be, he was like the number one participant in the parade that day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not holding anything back. Come on. Good. He was completely, totally invested. He was all in. Somebody shout, all in. Oh. So the contrast is that she's in the window, he's in the streets. She's observing, he's participating. She sees what he's doing as risky. He sees it as an opportunity of a lifetime that he doesn't want to miss out on. So let me say this to you, church. No generation in recent history has been more nervous, more tentative, more hesitant, more withdrawn than the world is right now. Window logic is alive and well. That logic of be careful, play it safe. Don't get too close to people. Don't get too involved in the church. I'm sure you've heard about the phenomena. We're not just quitting, like in terms of the the word that we've used. There's something else that is called quiet quitting. And and it just simply means people do only what is expected of them and not anything more. And that's just settled in on society right now. There's 7 million men in the U.S. between ages 24 and 50 that are not employed and not looking for work. So with lots of jobs available, something something spiritual is happening, causing people to 
be on the sideline, causing people to like window watching, causing people to be withdrawn and isolated, staying away. But what most people don't think about is the danger of doing that. So let me, let me share a few things. First one is this, playing it safe. If you're taking notes, playing it safe is not as safe as people think it is. There's a very real danger in playing it safe. You say, well, what is that, Pastor Kevin? Let me tell you a few things. The danger of missing out on God's plan for your life. Because it doesn't happen in the window. I said it doesn't happen in the window. It happens in the street. It happens in the high-risk areas where you become vulnerable, where you open up your lives without reserve, and you invest yourself. You know, Jesus said it like this. He said, if you love your life, you lose it. You can, just, you can just see the, if you stay in the window, you lose it. Like, wow. if you lose your life, you gain life, he said. Yeah. He's talking about window versus street. Window versus street. Window, be, be careful and you'll miss out yeah. on what God has for you. So the real danger of you not meeting people you're supposed to meet. I thought to myself early, I looked around, y'all are so young, most of you anyway. I'm like, I bet I know Pastor Jabin longer than anybody in this room. I'm not one of his recent friends. You know those recent friends? You know? Yeah, I'm honored to be here. I absolutely honored, I promise. But... You better invite me here. You got all those guys. They were not invited, invited, he's saying. I wasn't number eight on the list. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. He's got all, because he's so loved. He's so loved. And God's using him in such a great way. But I just want you to know I'm the longtime friend. Um, But... Correct me if I'm wrong, I, this is not on script. I believe that you, I've heard you say that I was speaking at, a, at an event in New Mexico and that was one of the first times you felt or the first time you felt God calling you into ministry. So, oh, that means that I can't be your age if that happened. It was... <laughs> Like that, I just ruined it all right there. But it was, I think, a youth or, I don't know, it was a conference. And you were involved, you were there. And, uh, that, but back to my point is that if, if you're not in the street, you don't meet the people. And you don't hear the message that you're supposed to hear. And the people you're supposed to meet. You, you don't get the future God in, has for you. you. You don't get it in the window. Is anybody hearing me today? You, you, you're praying, God, your will be done. Well, it's not going to happen up in the window. Pray all you want about that. It's not going to happen in the window. Well, I, I don't know. I'm a little nervous about... You know, uh, Pastor, I just got to be careful. I, you know, I was in a church and I ended up really hurt, and I don't want that for my future. And I don't, I'm just telling you, it won't happen in the window. You won't get God's plan playing it safe. You won't get God's plan for your life playing it safe. And and by the way, with all the stuff going on in our culture today, the church is not supposed to take our cues from culture. We are not called to fit in. We are called to stand out. Yeah. 
So when you're hearing all that chatter, just no, 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 no. That's the world. That's the way the world is thinking right now. That's not God's plan for us. Like if there's ever been a time for us to be aggressive, it's now. If there's ever been a time for us to be brave, it is now. If there's ever been a time for us to be bold, it's right now. (laughs) And I really believe God's calling us to that as a church. I I believe God's calling us to speak truth, to be unapologetically citizens of God's kingdom, doing life God's way, rather than trying to mime or mimic or fit in with what culture is doing. In fact, if you just want simplistic kind of terminology from me today, I'm I'm off and going now. But I I, I want you to understand the world is filled with ideas about, well, politics this or red or blue. or It's not about none of that. It's it's kingdom versus culture. It's kingdom versus culture. It's kingdom versus culture. And when when you hear culture... Like right now, you hear all the stuff, be careful about jumping on the bandwagon with culture before you check out, is it kingdom or not? Like, because a lot of what's culture isn't kingdom. I love this quote by Helen Keller. She said, avoiding danger in the long run is no safer than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or it's nothing. So the story of City Light is in process right now. And that means that God's calling people to this house. He's calling people to this vision. Sports teams, there's a phenomena that happens sometimes in sports. They come out aggressive. They're all tuned up, fired up, ready to go. They come out, they start the game real aggressive. They want to get ahead, they want to get a lead. And then this phenomena that sports psychologists are, they, they, literally, they, 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 they literally have names and, and, and labels for it. But the, the, the phenomena is that they get a little bit of a lead and then they start playing it safe. They start protecting their lead. And the next thing you know, rather than being on their toes, they're being on their heels. And the next thing you know, they're losing ground rather than gaining ground. So, hey, welcome to five years. But can I just tell you, don't play it safe. Don't play. Don't play it safe. I said don't play it safe. Like, be daring. Like, I love the way your pastor, he's so nice. He gets up here, he talks about, you know, the kids. We have a place over here and take your children and all that. Um, that's because he's a really nice pastor. He's being, what he's actually saying is, please don't leave your kids in this auditorium. (laughs) That's, that's 36 years of pastoring right there, but uh, that's all cool. Like we, yeah, great. But do y'all understand what I'm saying? Like, everything's not going to be perfect. This is an amazing auditorium, by the way. Thank God for this auditorium. And then when I heard it was, uh, it was I saw the sign Lions, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm like, I'm, that, I wear chains. I think I, yeah. I wear, see that right there? I, I'm one of those. I, I remind myself all the time, I'm a lion. So I knew I'd fit right in here today. I'm saying to you, it's don't start playing it safe. We're only five years old. We're just now getting old enough to cause a little trouble. (laughs) Oh, wow. So the second thing I want to tell you is that comfort is way overrated. It's way overrated. Ask a pregnant woman if she's comfortable, she will slap you. Of course she's not comfortable. But comfort is not to be expected when you're having a baby. It's not the goal. Wow. 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying, like, it may not all be, this is amazing, and the parking lot's amazing, but it might get a little more crowded. We might have to add some services. I don't know, the building might cost a little, just a warning, might cost a little more than how it starts off. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying God's got you, and you're not going after comfort. You are a church pregnant with God's plan for the future. So when somebody around you right now starts like talking about, well, you know, just tell them, like, hey, that's over, that, that, that comfort thing is overrated. Not what we're after anyway. And just like, by the way, just like babies are formed in pressure, diamonds are also formed in pressure. So pressure is where babies are born and diamonds are formed. Mm. That preacher's good. Like, <laughs> no, no, really. Like, we we sometimes want comfort, but we crave. We all crave the things that only courage can give us. So we can choose comfort or courage. But we can't choose both. At least not at the same time. And that's why I say comfort is overrated. We don't get stronger by being comfortable. Anybody wants to get stronger, you wouldn't tell them sit in your on your couch. You lazy boy. What would you tell them? You're going to have to get up and move. You're going to have to not be comfortable. You're going to go have to pick up some weights, feel some resistance, feel a little bit of pain. You still love me, like, right? I just... I feel, I feel like God, I really feel like God's telling you on birthday number five, don't play it safe. Like, don't play it safe. This is really great. This is really cool. Your music, your worship is amazing. Like, these people up here, like, you're going to be, you're, God's got a plan for that. For the worship of this house to bless way beyond the borders of this house. You just got to know that you can't start playing it safe in the process. And you can't start wanting to be comfortable because it's not about that. It's about saying yes, even though yes means being uncomfortable. It's about saying yes, even though you got to move your schedule around a little bit. It means saying yes, I'm excited even when I have to park further back in the parking lot. It means saying yes, even when you're not noticed as much because the church is growing and there's so many more people coming and you used to like be the star of the group and now it's all growing, right? And you're not noticed, you're not, pastor isn't like able to shake your hand and hang out with you and say hi and I love you and you're amazing and that's what I'm, t- I'm just talking about growing pains like you got to keep the growing going, and the way to do that is to make sure you're not attached to comfort. Lastly, I'll give give you one more thing, and that Pastor Jabin touched on that. That is, living small doesn't bring glory to God. Come on, come on, just doesn't. Saint Augustine said, "Without God, we cannot, and without us, God will not." There's a partnership, and the scripture in 2 Corinthians has just spoke a lot to me, and through the book, this is a lot of what it was about. It says, Dear Corinthians, this is 2 Corinthians 6, 
says, Dear Corinthians, I, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. And then the man of God is saying, I'm speaking just as plainly as I can. And with great affection. Open up your lives. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. Every parent, every good parent in this room has knelt in front of that child's face when they're afraid and have told them, be brave. On the first day of school, be brave. Like uh, standing by their bed when you're helping them to not be afraid of the dark, you're telling them it's okay. And that you can feel that in the Apostle Paul as he's writing here to the young church at Corinth and, and he's saying, I, I'm, I'm speaking to you right now as plainly as I can, but with great affection. Like, I know I sound like I might be scolding you, but please understand it's because there's a future at stake. Like, the, the, I can't, you can't get where you're meant to go if you're afraid of the dark. Like, you can't get where God's plan for you to be if you don't scoot out of the car and head toward the school when you don't want to go and you're only six or seven years old and mom is dropping you off like you're not going to get where you're supposed to go by being afraid. I know, I know that you feel small, but that's just coming from within you. And I don't know, again, who I might be talking, like at a personal level, a lot of what the ugly stuff that comes out of us comes out of us because we're feeling small. And God's never glorified by us being small, playing small. God never gets any glory out of that. The African Apala, the Impala, can jump literally 10 feet high and 30 feet into the distance. And is kept in zoos with a four to six foot tall wall. And here's why. Because the impala refuses to leap if it can't see where it will land. I don't know what was exactly going on in the church at Corinth. Whenever the writer was appealing to them with great affection. Like, I don't know what, I, I have a feeling he'd heard a little bit of something. A little bit of pettiness. A little bit of maybe people getting an attitude wrong. I, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you that his appeal was based on knowing that the minute you start pulling back and hesitating is the minute that you stop experiencing the possibility and the potential that I have put within you, that I've entrusted into your care. So today, Pastor mentioned, think three. And I'm going to end with this. You're five years old. But don't, don't ever stop thinking about the five-year-old children. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. So good. 
And I know most of you are really young, but I'm going to ask you to lift up your eyes and look. Because thinking big is not just about size. It's about thinking long term. And one of the greatest privileges I've had in 36 years or 37 years of pastoring is watching babies that I dedicated to the Lord with young couples in my church that are now pastoring churches, leading churches, thriving in their lives. There ain't nothing like it. There ain't nothing like it. The reason we're building buildings is we want the best for our kids. We want the best for the future. And God only knows how many buildings or what we'll build or how it'll all look or how it all, it'll all happen. But I'm going to tell you that today is just the beginning. And, and Pastor mentioned we call it Think Three. We think at our level of age, we think two generations down. Bible calls that we think of our children and our children's children. And you can be 16 today and you can have more influence on a 10 year old that's watching everything you do than their parents have right now. So don't count yourself out of this. Don't count yourself out of this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't count yourself out of this. And, do, and don't you dare play it safe because there's little eyes watching you and there's ears listening to you. And what's being entrusted into your care right now is not just about the next building. It's about a future that God has planned for our children and our children's children. Amen. I love all of you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Thank you.